I'm sorry. We talk about the business, and we seen I am athlete. You say you guys searched Charlemagne, you guys looked at Joe Button, you guys looked at uh all 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 up in smoke, all the smoke, yeah. all the smoke, and things like that. But your platform was it was like the first of its kind. It was so new, unique, and not the first of its kind because it was athletes talking. Because we've seen athletes talk before, but it was the first of its kind to see the conversations that you guys was having, and. You got at first, you guys wasn't even talking sports. It was just special. Yeah. Was y'all ready for what came with that? I'm um, I think we 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 were surprised by how fast it blew up. We were surprised by it. That shit's crazy. And it was fun, and it started with talking like that. Like uh uh me and me and, and B, we're in the backyard, we have our feet in the pool, we drinking beers, our kids are playing together in the pool. And we're talking about, and I'm kind of telling him about this real estate thing that my wife got me into, these Airbnb, well, that's when Airbnb kind of started and it was rolling. And and I was I was telling I was telling B about these Airbnb things that were going on. And I'm like, yeah, and this, we talking about the return and talking about the um, you know, if you section eight, then you get this, and government sends you a guaranteed check. So I'm like, we're talking about that. He's talking about some investments. And then we were kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Like, people don't think black dudes sit and talk about like this wealth building, mm. you know, like people don't, people don't, people don't see two alpha male, black alpha males. I call them lions. I call us lions. You don't see lions sitting around talking about like life and family. We're married. I'm married for 12 years. He's married. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like all, all that's, all that's uh, publicized is throwing money in the strip club and buying cars and all that. But like people don't think about like that, that, like, we're we're businessmen. Mm. We're all businessmen. We have a number of companies. I have I don't know how many fucking LLCs I have, but it's a bunch of fucking LLCs, and this is there, and this is that, and this is sees that, and my manager does this, and so that's how it started. Is like let's get these lions, these black male lions, all up and show people that we can all sit on the same platform and talk, and that's how it started. And so then once the I am athlete thing, once it blew up because uh, of the power struggle and the, 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 the it, it wasn't very transparent where the money was because the money started coming in. Cause the but wait, let's up. pause, right? Let's not fast. So let's, let's not, I don't want to skip through this. No. Men, we're talking about, like you said, they don't see the, the things that we're talking about, the, the, the money, the power plays that we're talking about right behind the closed doors. If this is who you guys are and these are the conversations that you're having, how do you miss that conversation? That was the thing because you, you get with your homeboys and you like, okay, cool, let's do this. Cool, cool, cool. Let's but you do got a hundred, like you said, mad LLC. So you, it ain't like you, uh, you're not, you're not stupid. You're not but, oblivious to the business. But you overlook it because it's your homeboy. That's what I think a lot of people do, and that's what that's what we did. We overlooked it because it was a home. It was the dude. Like I said, if you start a business sitting around drinking beer with your feet in the pool, you know what I'm saying? Like, and and I tell you, I dropped the ball on it. Okay. Because on the other side, there there's there's a. I have a team. Johnny Williams is my attorney. He's a stupid attorney. CPAs, business managers. Uh, Alex Alexis, my money man, is a dog. Merrill Lynch, man, he's a like. I have people around me. But even when we started that, I if somebody comes at me in public right now, and I, it happens, it happens three times a week. Somebody runs up to me in public. I, I'm shopping. I'm buying, you know, salmon and shit. And the dude was like, "Hey, man, I want to open a sports bar." I got this plan, I got this, I got that, and, and I entertain them. I'm like, yeah, man, cool, man, it sounds good. What, you need an investor? Yeah, I need an investor, cool. At the end of the conversation, I'm going to give him my attorney's number and say, call Johnny Williams and call Alex Alexis. Mm -hmm. If you can get them to believe in it, mm. I'll believe in it because I know they're great at their jobs, and that's why I've dealt with them for 15, 20 years. Like, they're great at what they do. With, with the I Am Athlete situation, it was homeboys sitting around drinking, hanging out, bullshit, and that's why I, I did not go through the normal, the normal approach to how I do business because we're homeboys, we're talking, we just set this thing off. It was COVID, we're sitting around, like it was a flaw. It was a flaw on all on all sides. We were just we were, we were we were too open just to, okay, yeah, let's see what happens. And then what we saw what happened went crazy, and then we were like. Oh damn, we we need to tighten up the business, and by that time we couldn't tighten up the business. And that's why I'm glad we had this conversation. And I, I was thinking about it from a different angle. 
and it's really like I get it, but I don't get it because I'm coming up in the business, right? So granted, I'm looking at these grown men and these these powerful influences that like y'all know the voice y'all have, y'all 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 know the platforms that y'all got. Granted, you probably don't know don't know what's, what it's going to come from, but I just don't I'm trying to be respectful in this. I don't I don't see that being an excuse because like that was your friend. So if you you said y'all did the research, right? Yeah. How how, how could you say you did the research and you know this shit happens? We seen Joe Button and mm-hmm. Roy and Maul. We seen that. We, we seen, seen Molly them. We, we seen smoke. We seen. So if you saw that, how can you not know to get the business right for the sake of your friendship? Because it, it was it was, it's it's just fluke and stuff. It's like the divorce rate is fifty two percent in America, right? Mm-hmm. You know that over fifty percent. I don't know what the number is, but it's over fifty percent. So you going to you going to a marriage. Nobody wants to get divorced. For sure. But over half of the people that get married get divorced. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that was the thing that we really... And now at this point, I would tell you to your, to your question, I feel crazy is that I, I have so many companies. We have, like I say, we got more LLCs. My wife, she does a, like our real estate stuff and the business and the shark diving and the charter boats and the stuff that we do. It's always business first. But it, it goes back to why Jeff Bezos got divorced. Right? I don't know. Why did he? The, but them billionaires get divorced. Oh, yeah, for sure. So they're geniuses. They're billionaires. But they can't work this out with another human being. You see, you see what I'm saying? No, I get it. It's just... <clears throat> but, 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 but no, 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 no. Go ahead. But it's the same thing. Like, if you look at... You, you're like, why cannot this work out? Y'all should be able to figure this out. Why can't married couples figure it out? Divorce rates over 50%. So half of the people that get married get divorced because they can't emotionally figure this out. They can't figure out how to do this. And I think that's what happens in the big picture of things is that, okay, now it's, it's something. How are we going to deal with this something? And we couldn't deal with that something. And the something was the money thing? It, it, was, it was the money thing, and it was um, who controlled it. It was like the transparency of everything. Do you think it was some? Just looking back on that situation, do you feel like it was something that you could have did differently? Um, get the the business side settled before we even shot a show. That that was the one thing, and that's what we did actually with Pivot. That's what we did with Pivot. We had we had a business, we had the structure, we had the Pivot LLC to all of uh, you know Fred Ryan, myself, our attorney, our producer, our LLCs. We had a whole business structure, a pyramid set of where the money funnels and all. But we learned from the the last. Thing. So whatever, every penny that comes into the pivot, it funnels, you know what I'm saying? It funnels down and we know where it's going and we know where it's, where it's achieving. But the, it's, it's like, a, it, it, the simplest thing is a business plan. And our business plan, I would say, I, I would have, if I knew what the last situation was going to be, we should have set up a business plan like the pivot has mm. from day one. If we set up that business plan, I don't know if we'd be where we are now because everything would be set. Are y'all still like friends? We cool. No real talk. Like it, it ain't no like people ask me all the time. Like, oh, y'all gonna fight? We're not fighting anybody. I'm, man, First I'm, of all, we grown as I'm thirty nine years fighting. old. I ain't fighting. Yeah, wait, no more. I'm saying, but are y'all cool? My we only, see my own. I got three more fights left in me, and that's with my daughter's boyfriends. Mm. <laughs> that's all I got. If my daughter, if I got a daughter, she is she is stupid beautiful, and I know somebody gonna act crazy, and I'm gonna fight some little seventeen year old boy one day. I got three left in me. Okay. I'm not fighting no girl, No, for man. sure. Not even that. I think that's a childish even... That's a childish question. Not even fighting, though. Like, I just feel like I'm... Come on, bro. We see what's... Yeah. Hey, listen. We see what's going on on the internet. Y'all talk about... Y'all had y'all had 100 interviews about the same shit. And when I ask... I'm not asking are y'all cool just for the sake of it because it don't seem like... It seemed like y'all niggas is on the internet just, like, going at it. Like, not going at it, but, like, you know, now we're starting to get a little messy. I feel like, just being honest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it don't look like friends. I don't feel that. That's yeah. why I ask you, are y'all really still friends? It's, um, it, it, it's funny because I tell you this. If you think about it, there are so many different dynamics. So there's B, there's Shady, there's Pat. So there's three people on this side. Mm-hmm. There's me, there's Ryan, there's Freddie. Mm-hmm. My, my dog's on this side. So if you think about it, everybody has their own relationship with the other person. With, with the other three dudes. So it's three times three. So it's nine relationships. Mm. So it's not like us versus them. It's nine relationships that got to be solved. And there's been a lot of disrespect on both sides towards different people. 
from different angles. So person number one, number two, number three. Person number one, number two, number three. So like if person number one talk crazy to person number three, does do 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 does that, do I get mad? You ain't disrespect me. You just remember my homie. And I it, it's 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 a receipt in the back of my head, but you ain't disrespect me. So it it it's the dynamic of and I have to go back to it with lions. And all them dudes, all the six guys I said are six lions. They're, they're dudes that run their world. Like they have a, they, they're the son of a solar system. So you get three, three people like that around, three people like that around each other on one side, three people like that around each other on the other side. All of it's not going to vibe. But I would say from my end, my solar system, people don't really act crazy towards me. Because people think I'm crazy, and I am crazy. So it's like, no, you're not gonna really talk. You're not gonna disrespect me in in a, in a crazy way because I'm not. They don't. I'm not built to deal with that. But from other people and all the arguments that go on in them other solar systems, if y'all can get the analogy, it might be something different. But I have no man. I I sleep so good every night. I sleep like a baby at night. I'm not worried about nobody else. I'm not worried about no other nigga. I'm not worried about that. Me and my wife lay next to each other. I cuddle up and I go to bed like a like a two year old. No, I, I mean I get it. It's just at first, just being honest, right? I'm a fan and a supporter before anything, right? I got my own shit. I know my shit is good, and but I I I feel like I speak for so many other people that look at y'all show before we even get to the pivot, right? Before because that's a great show too. But so many people looked at that show as like inspiration and, and it added so much value to our lives. And I feel like I speak for a lot of people when I say that. So it's cringeworthy to say, like, and I, I'm glad we had this conversation because as much as I, you're inspiring and I admire you, I, I, we're, still a, we're still men. I hope we could have a man conversation. Uh, I'm so I say, man. no, no. So I say that, what, yeah. so I say to say, it's cringeworthy to see a bunch of men, like people that we inspired by that started something so great in here over some fucking bullshit it's just like i just feel like y'all should be able to put y'all egos to the ego to the side you talking about going to a nudist colony and not looking at niggas dicks put your dick down and talk to niggas as men and be like yo look it was wrong you know what i'm saying we apologize at least squash it so it won't be a bunch of mess on it and then i just feel like y'all owe that to y'all to not only yourselves yeah but at least the people that that supported y'all and loved y'all man but it, it's it looks crazy um, right now but it, it's it's it you you have to mm. You have to see you. You have to you have to know where what people really have your back and what people don't. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that I think a lot of people get caught up in. A lot of young I say it, young black dudes and young, you know, young people get caught up in is that they don't know. Like it's it, and I'm not. You know what? Take that shit out of there. Take black, take young, take all of it. Humans don't know who really have their back mm. until they show you who yeah, true who who has your back. And who's there for you and who wants you to eat together and who wants who, who wants to vibe together. And one thing that I always say, I don't give a, I don't care what the check, the, the number is on the check. If you pay me this much, how much are you making? Is my question. Mm -hmm. And Brandon, he said it in the past. He was like, yeah, Channing always wanted to know what the big check was and not his cut. I want to know what my value is. I'm not going for 7% or 8% of a check. Like, I, I'm, I'm worth more than that. So that's the thing, too, is that you have to, and it, it goes back to the business plan. It goes back to the private equities that I'm in. It goes back to the, the real estate investments that I'm in with my, you know, with my wife, is that we ha you have to put a, a number on what. If you're going to spend $100,000 on anything, or $100, or $1, 7% of $1, Seven cents. Mm -hmm. Seven percent of a thousand, seven thousand. Seven percent of a million. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you can do the math on that. I always want to know the math, and the math wasn't clear. And the math was all spreadsheets that you can create, but I need to see receipts. Mm -hmm. And that's that's that was the problem, is that I, I always need facts. And that's how I run. I'm very analytical. My mind's analytical. And it's actually a... Analytical people, it's a knock, it's a knock in relationships because it's so mathematical that it doesn't attest to emotion. Mm. Like you're talking about y'all boys and black men and y'all homeboys and y'all do this and that and this. Oh, I understand it. But what percentage are you giving me? Eight? 
<laughs> no, I don't need eight. I'm worth more than eight. I need 15. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that, and, and, and it's, it's, it's a mid ground of what am, what am I worth to this business? And there's so many other businesses going on and we have so much stuff going on. And that's how I run the other businesses. We run the real estate with my wife. We run the, the charter boats we have. We run the shark diving company we have. We run so much thing on return, you know, uh, APY and a APR and all that, like the numbers of it. So now you get with one of your homeboys and you're not concerned with the percentage. So you run every business that you have. And we have 15 businesses. But now you get with a, you get with your friend, and now you just and that's what I and I'll say it that's what we did we all just ran into it like oh this is fun this is good it's not good let's figure out the numbers if we do get a million dollars how much am I making off that million and that's what we didn't do and that's why it broke and I will take full credit for not figuring that shit out before I did mm. and Freddie too will take full credit for not figuring that shit out before we did we both have two different situations but. The learning part, like I say, the failure, failure makes you learn. The learning part now is that the pivot, we got that shit buttoned up. Can I ask you this? Every dollar that comes in, I know how much I'm making off that dollar. What? How do you measure your value and your worth in a situation like that? How do you measure your value? You know it. You really know it. You know, I know if I'm on anything, even this podcast, to be honest, I'll no, tell do you. Your thing, do your thing. I know that my voice means something. I know that I'm going to, whatever I say, people are going to listen to. I know that I'm funnier than most motherfuckers in any room. I know that I'm more intriguing than everybody in the room. Like I, I and my wife confirms it all the time. She's like, you got to value, you got to value your time and value who you are. And I know it. So if you make a hunt, if, I did, like, and be honest, I ain't making no money off this shit. Like, I don't know what you make, your YouTube views. Yeah, man, you got it, bro. Thank you, brother. I'm, I'm about, I'm about, I'm, I run it up, run it up, run it up. Get, get your bread. Appreciate it. But, like. <clears throat> so don't hold back. Just let you know. Yeah, but this, but, th but this this situation, I look at my camera, like. Please talk. I'm not going to be an asshole. No, talk. No, but say when I But when I walk, like, when I walk in here, I don't know if y'all, when I walk in here, when I walk in rooms. And I'm, start, I'm starting to tell people this, and it was something I thought for a long time, and I didn't say it. But now I'm telling a lot of people this. When I walk into a room, I say you're welcome, mm. not thank you. Mm. I'm here. You're welcome. Where do you want me to go? I'm here now. You're welcome. Not thank you for having me. Like, and, and, and I love, bro, no, all love no, to no, be no. on the pod, but hey, like, no, you like good. nigga, you're I'm welcome. Show you something. You're welcome that I'm here, like, that's and that's the thought of what people should be, and that's the thought of what I think. So, with everything I do, if 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 I wasn't on um, the other show, it wouldn't have blown up like that. If I'm not on, I am. Uh, if I'm not on um, Pivot, it's not gonna blow up like that. I love Fred and RC, and they have their role. If I'm not there, it's not blown up that way. I'm not on this show, it's not blown up like that. And we know it, and Fred respects it, and Ryan respects it, and they respect it. Right. And I respect them. The pivot would not have blown up without Fred. The pivot would not have blown up without RC. And I respect them too. But you have to value yourself and know that I bring something to this table. So whenever I walk into a room, it's, it's like it's really your welcome. And it not sounds sure. cocky, and it, it sounds like assholeish. But no, don't thank people to be in your room. And all the young people out there, don't thank people to be in that room. They need to thank you for being in that room. No cap. And that's that's when the mind frame changes is that I'm here now. I'm here now. So I was showing you, my. Uh, that's why I say don't, you don't have to hold back at anything because I understand. And when you're confident, and I feel like I say this a lot, a lot of times men lack confidence, so they can't, they can't take other people's testimony. You could come to us and say, I sit at a table and I raise the stock. And I understand that because I can understand, I can still, have an understanding of myself and know where I'm going at with or without you, right? Respectfully, right? So I had that same respect for you. I was gonna say I just posted a picture. I said, yo, I never been the I never been the glad to be here type. I'm more so of the you let me show you why you took too fucking long. Right? Like yeah. you really took too long to have me on here. Like I, I said it with Bel Air, like respectfully I thank God is a is a is a is a dope um is a dope opportunity, but let me show you why you took too long. You get what I'm saying? I, yes. I still can be appreciative and it's not cocky, it's just I know my worth. So I understand what you what you're saying. You know your worth, but let me ask you this though: 
when I say, how do you judge your worth? Because I, I think the story is out there that you wanted to get paid from it, right? Like you just wanted to get paid. Um, I think he put uh, put in all the money, right? He put up all the money up front mm -hmm. for it. So if I put in all the money up front for it, right? How how am I? How do you coming into a situation that kind of I built, right? I put this money in, yeah, we. It, but it couldn't be no channing the personality without the cameras that I bought. It couldn't be no channing the personality without the the the, the lights and the production. And let's be real, you did radio for what twelve years? Mm -hmm. You you ain't never been this channing, respectfully. Yeah. Oh, no, no, Respectfully. No, I yeah. so, so I'm asking you, how do you how do you put a number on on that for people that's looking at that got production? How you put a number on that? Because, bro, you came into something and with all due respect, because of the, the, the thing that I poured into this helped you get to another level. Yeah. Right. So how do you put a number to that being respectful of all parties? Oh, yeah. No, 100 percent. And I, I tell you, B, B, B did do a lot. Um, off bat, the uh, the 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 we had a chance to invest early, but the contracts weren't they weren't buttoned up. They weren't they were very unprofessional. The contracts early were unprofessional, but it, it it's a situation where if you put everything into it, and I say this after the money started coming in, I said a number of times I was like pay your, pay off all the cameras, like this was my thought. So now the money's coming in. Like you're saying, the whole investment, whatever the cameras were, whatever the production crew, whatever that, pay that off. Because the amount of money, we're getting checks. Mm -hmm. So money's coming in. Pay that off. I, let's get to zero. So now we're making money. Pay off the camera. Pay off the production. Pay off everything. Let's get to zero. And now let's break it down. How, though? Which way? Is it going to be evenly? Let's break it down evenly. Is that fair, though? Or, or no, no, no. Actually, he could, he could took, have taken more but equally distributed out over everybody. But so you, in, you invest $100,000 into something, right? That right. you didn't know was going to work. Right. But I now, took a risk. Now, but you took a risk. Right. So now it made $300,000. Mm -hmm. How much money do you deserve from that $100,000 you invested? Was it just me? That's, that's yeah, just you. Um, the whole thing, I would assume. The three hundred. Yeah. So you need three times of what your investment was. Whatever I Even mean, though without, without me... No, that's why it I said it's just nothing. No, if it's no, 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 I'm asking. Is it just no, me? No, 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 no. This is the exact situation you're talking about. Oh, the exact situation. I, honestly, just being honest, I really don't know. And that's why I want to I wanna ask this question. Yeah. Because I feel like it's so, y'all really setting the pace for so many other people. Yeah. And we can learn from this. And I feel like, you know, honestly, hypothetically, I don't know. If um, if you if, if you, I spend put, hundred, if I, if I bought, you spend 100 racks. 100 racks, right? And I got my, my guy that's helping me, right? Yeah. Whatever his contribution was to making us blow up, that's what I think he should get. So, for example, if 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 if, if the effort uh, if we measuring things by effort, okay, I bought the uh, I bought the equipment. That's a, a a third of the effort. Okay, um, I had the platform. Now that's um fifty percent of the effort. Uh, what else did I bring to this? Let's let's look at it, right? What did you co contribute? Okay, you came in, you uh you, you helped me set up. That's that's blood, sweat, and tears. Okay, that mm -hmm. might be ten percent. Let's um you, you you made sure that we we was we was we was. All the cameras was focused. Okay, that might be five percent. What is what is what is each part worth, right? And then after we add it up, then we we break it down like that, right? That's how I think of it. But that's what I'm asking you: How do you measure your worth? How do you put a, a number or a dollar sign on your value coming into that situation? My my thing was, you if whatever you put in, mm -hmm. pay yourself back with interest. And I said it. Okay. That that's my thought. Like if you take if you take a hundred thousand dollars, like. You can give me, you can give me a hundred dollars. I can give you a hundred and seven dollars back a year from now. Like a APR, you know what I'm saying? Like the APR and all. Like if you can't get ten, if you can't get double digit percentages, you're not a good financial financial advisor. And my financial advisor, I'm always in the, you know, the the nine ten percent of it. So you can just sit money nowhere and make nine percent, ten percent if you have a good financial advisor. So now you've taken that money out of investments. If you invested for a year, a hundred thousand, I believe that you should get one hundred and ten thousand dollars back in a okay. year. Okay. You I, can't. That hundred thousand cannot make. Can, where, where are you going to go to make more than a hundred thousand dollars in that year? What are you going to do? So how do you? You're going to make a bunch of risky investments that can't pay off or might pay off. Okay, so what I'm cur my curious, my I'm curious to know that could be right in. in no, 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 it, it's 100 percent correct. Ten, double digit percentage return is amazing. Mm. So if you put a hundred thousand dollars into something, 
you get you should get 10 percent of it my thing and i've talked i talked to brandon about it was hey whatever money you invested take that add 10 percent take your money back now we're at zero mm, okay now at zero if that money wasn't there and i took all the risk but you took the risk out of something that was was going to make if you just let it sit in the market was going to make seven or eight percent and I know the market. I follow the market. I look at the, the stock market, uh, S and P 500, all that Nasdaq every day. I know what that money would would have made sitting, and it's not 10 percent a year. So take your money with a 10 percent return, which is amazing. Now let's get to zero. There's red and black. That's why they call it. Uh, what's it called? Uh, black Black Friday yeah. after Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. They call it Black Friday because red means negative, black means positive, and every store is black the Friday after Thanksgiving because everybody's shopping for Christmas, and that's why I call it Black Friday. So get in the the black. Let's get us to zero, and let's get in the black with our investment of what this show is flipping. Once now we're flipping money, take your money, take a return on your money, and I'm fine with that, and now let's move forward, and let's break this money down to what the worth is. If I'm one, if if there's four people on the show, I'm worth 25% of that show. And probably more, but I'll take 25% because I know my value. Mm. I know what I bring to every show. Every, everything I touch is bettered by my personality, my, my sense of humor and all that stuff. So that's what it is. And that's, that's how the breakdown was. It wasn't like, man, hey, fuck that, we need some money. It was, it, it was very strategically, financially, number-driven. Number and it just couldn't work out. And we've had, we, had, we had 10 meetings or more about it, and it just couldn't work out because we couldn't get to the same point of finding the value of what you're worth. So your question is a great question, but the value of what you're worth is a diluted question because everybody has to figure that out. Mm. And my, my value is at least what portion of the people that are on camera is. This, this podcast right now, not to hurt your feelings, this is 70% me, mm. 80% me. I mean. You know I, what I'm saying? Like, I, I feel you. I, I like, so, but that's, and that's why I think, because as being men, I feel like we should be able to have these conversations and not yeah. just taking personal, right? I feel like two things should be able to coexist and we should be able to find some type of boundaries or leverage to, to, to compromise, right? So your idea of what you thought is, yo, from what I learned from my financial advisors is, you make it double digits is great. That's what you learn, right? Yes. And granted, it sounds great to me because just being honest, I ain't touched none of that, n- n- nowhere near that much money. So I really don't know. So I'm just going to take it at face value. But to somebody else who've been making that money and making the investments, who know who, who's to say that 10% is good enough for them, right? That's one. Two, my second point is you could feel that you're 70% of the show, right? And that's cool. And I can respect that, but I can also respectfully disagree because I know the work that I put in. Granted, you're you're dope, you're a dope ass personality, but I, I don't take it personal because you should feel like that. Shit, you yeah. should feel like you a hundred percent. That don't have shit to do with me. But yeah. I know how I feel, and I know as yeah, a man, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we should be able to come to a conversation and be like, you know what? Even if you feel that way, how do we compromise? How do we how do we come to a median? And I think this is the conversation. Fuck the I am athlete, the pivot. This is this is it's bigger than that. Cause that's and this is what I want to talk about because you guys and it's it's so much bigger than you. Uh, Brandon Marshall, fucking Chad Johnson, and uh, F- Freddie F- Fred Taylor. It's, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than RC. It's bigger than fucking uh, Shady McCoy. It's bigger than that. It's about the people that you're inspiring and how do we make the world better. For, and I'm not trying to sound politically, but it, that's what it's about. So if we could talk about that. You say you feel you 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 think you um you 70 percent, and I say I don't agree. Then how do we move forward? Is it it's just like fuck it? Like we want to just get up and lead the podcast? No. And then then you have you have those conversations. That's the thing. Like. It's so funny that it's cool. It's cool that you ask it. It's cool that you see. Like you're trying to see the approach to. You're really asking how do you approach business? How do you approach value? And then from the other side of the return of things, and you have to make you have to make money make sense. Mm-hmm. It has to make sense to you. So if you take a hundred thousand dollars, you have it. You have it sitting. You can give it to somebody, and they can make. Seven, six, seven percent. It's easy to make. I can make you six, seven percent a year, mm-hmm. right? So if you take that same money and put it into something, and you can make six or seven percent on that, what's the point of doing it? Mm. Because you can sit and not do nothing. 
And that was it. Like you, like, so you say you don't know about money and all this stuff. That's what you're working with right now. Like historically, six, seven, five, seven, five to seven percent is kind of like that's that's not hard to make in the stock market. Just let the, let it ride and do all that. The part of it is the riskier side of things. So when you get risky, now you're put now you're putting it out and trying to do it. So that's why you go up to a different percentage and say, okay, well now we need to do this. So I put the money out there in a risk factor. Okay. And so that's the thing that you have to uh, put a value on. But it's no different than putting it in the stock market. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Like it, 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 it's not like you can't you can't put any risk factor or anything. You do you buy a house and try to turn, flip it. You're trying to make a certain percentage of whatever money you put out. You buy a two hundred thousand dollar house. You're gonna do the math on okay. If I can flip this, I'm gonna spend thirty thousand. So that's two thirty. I can sell it for four hundred. Okay, so now I made one seventy. Like you do the math, the math problem on that situation. That's all that money is, and that's what we don't know. Like, there's no relationships in money. Mm. Money doesn't have a heart. Returns don't have a heart. Nothing ha like that doesn't have a heart. The heart, the emotion, the 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 the, the, the we're friends or we're not friends. That's where things get flawed. Mm. But money doesn't have a heart. And that's where I sit with everybody other than my wife. Money doesn't have a heart. I have no, I have no emotional attachment to anything that has, that has me making withdrawals from my account. If I have to put some money in and you have to put some money in, talk to me about the money side of it, not the, man, we boys and you dope. Okay, I'm dope. I know I'm dope. Where's my check? What percentage am I making? And that I think that that's the thing. Bigger picture, that's the thing that a lot of people get caught up in, mm. is the emotion, the emotion of stuff, and uh, and even the thing I'll say like, the 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 experience of what I bring to this podcast, I bring that podcast. Like I put a value, I put a I I put a value on my time, mm. and for you to run up to, run up on me and ask me to come on, I was like, bro, young man doing this thing. And I put a value on my time, but I did it because I was like, shit, now I can promote my man restaurant. Now I can promote this. Now I can promote that. I did it all strategically. It's all a, a strategy of what you do and how you do it and how you can uplift other people. But, yeah, it, it, every, everything, everything has a, uh, a return. Mm -hmm. And that's what you got to do is take the emotion out of it and try to find a return. So speaking of emotion, and right? How did that make you feel personally, though? Like seeing that that went down like that, and you lost friends from this. How did, when you go home and you speak to your wife, and y'all had those conversations, what are those conversations like? Uh, from what leaving I am athlete? Mm -hmm. From the oh, split? No, 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 nothing. Man. No big deal. Like I have great friends. <laughs> easy baby, easy Atlanta Harris, right, my, right. my man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like easy and, and and T and J and Jarvis and but I got I got plenty of friends like we did, and we didn't lose we lost a, a level of friendship on the business side, but it's not like like I said, I, I'm not fighting anybody. Like it's not like that. Like it's not even even the thing about like um uh the, the locker room. I'll tell you this. So when I retire. A lot of people say, what they say? They're like, what do, you, what do you miss? People say, I miss the locker room. Why do they say I miss the locker room? They pull me some of this. They say, why do I miss the locker room? Because they, they miss talking to people and having friends and having, um, you know, people to talk to every day. I don't miss the locker room at all mm. because I have friends. Like, I have real, I have true friends. I don't need a locker room to have friends. And that's the same thing to answer your question. I don't need business to have friends. I have, I have about, I tell you, six. I have a thread with them. They about seven, eight dudes that are my ace boom coons down from day one, and they're gonna be down from day one, before the money, before the success, before anything, and that's my circle. And I don't need a locker room to do that. I know, and they all here this day, this, they, they in Atlanta this weekend, and we all together and we hanging and vibing. Like I don't miss, I don't need. Uh, the people that are friends with me are going to be friends with me no matter what we do, no matter what they do. And some of my friends have businesses. One of my buddies have a construction business, and he asked me to invest, and the numbers weren't right. And I was like, nah, bro, I can't invest in that. And he was like, cool. 
And he went on and he's successful. Motherfucker make money. And I chose not to invest in it. And he continued to thrive in that business. And there's no hard feelings about that and then that. And we were just, we were in Magic City last night together. You know what I'm saying? Like emotion and business can be separated, but people that can't separate it, it's a problem because now, oh, well, you don't believe in me. I don't believe in your business. We, we tight. We cool. But I, I'm not giving you no money. Mm. And you can separate that thing. A lot of people can't. And that's, that's the, the, the hang up that a lot of people have. They can't separate friendship and business. If the, if the APR, the return, the percentage doesn't make sense to me, I'll say no. And then you can go on and make millions of dollars in that business. And I'm not going to be upset that I didn't invest. And you shouldn't be upset if you go broke in that business. Mm. I decided not to fuck with you. You decided to continue. If you made $17 billion, I'm going to sit back and be like, bro, congratulations. Bro, you did your thing. If you go broke, I'm going to be like, damn, bro, I told you this shit wasn't going to work. So you feel you would feel that way even if you didn't have the pivot? Like, yeah. you wouldn't be hurt? Man, I, so what about, bro, I don't care. So what about this? It's a real conversation. Let's a lot talk. Of, a lot of, thank you for allowing us to talk. I fuck with that. A lot of people caught strays from that. Mm -hmm. let's, talk, let's talk about it, right? Your wife, that, it, that built a, a platform for not only you, your wife. Right, mm -hmm. she was on I Am Woman. I'm, I don't know, I don't know y'all conversations, but if I'm asking these questions, I would assume that that was something that she enjoyed. How, how, did you, did you ever sit back home and have those conversations with your wife like, damn, like how did that make you feel? How did, how did that affect you and, and what you had going on? Yeah, we did, we did, and we talked about that. And as the platform, as we build our, our platform, then we've talked about doing, uh, uh, you know, seeing if we can try to pivot, you know, pivot that to something else with the women, but it, it's, me and my wife, and it's something that is, I found out that's special. Like we're on the, like we're on the same accord. Mm. Like Asia, Asia really fucks with me. You know what I'm saying? Like she sees it and I fuck with her. So we, we talk about it and I know that like that wasn't premier to her, you know, her, her success. Like she does her own thing. That was like an add on to what, what she's already does and what she already got going on. And then for me, the media side was bigger on my side than hers. So it wasn't, it wasn't like the conversation that we had about that was, she was like, yeah, it's no more I am woman, but she wasn't, she wasn't tore up about it. And I was like, well, we'll do something else, the pivot. We'll do something else and pivot and do that. But it, it it's like a, it's a synergy between us where I know where I know where she sits, she knows where I sit, and we just figure that shit out on the on the between us. But it wasn't it wasn't a situation where it was it was like combative or anything because it it was it wasn't like she she didn't care like it was it wasn't like oh I lost I am woman like I knew she wasn't she I knew before the whole thing was happening because the thing happened over so many over so many months that like we talked about that beforehand. I was like, Hey, you know what I'm saying? Well, this might, this might go left. And she was like, cool. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's the thing about the communication, like to this question, I knew, I knew my wife's answer three months before I left. I am athlete because we talk and I know how she, I know where she's at with things. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. It wasn't nothing like, well, if this happens, and she, you know, if if, if y'all don't do it, then, you know, this is gone. You cool, baby. Do your thing. You a star. You know what I'm saying? Like, she encourages me, like, you're a star. Like, go do your thing. Okay. Yeah. And and, and, it, and, and it's, 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 it's spoken upon before anybody else has to ask the question. So that's the thing with having, the, like, a woman like my wife is that, you can you can foresee you can foresee what's about to happen and you can foresee the options there's two options you're going to stay you're going to go we sit down we lay in the bed we sit and watch what's that shit called the dragon dragon house oh, that's a pretty good show we sit yeah. and watch the fucking <laughs> dragon, dragon. House. we sit and watch the fucking dragon house and then she'll sit there and we'll say yeah we're going to do here and then we'll pause the dragon house and then we'll talk Man, that was, what is it called a dragon house? Can we get a fucking name name check? House, house of Dragons dragon. with the Garion. Oh, 
<laughs> House of the Dragon. The, the, the Gary's with them bitches with the blonde hair? <laughs> okay. But we're really sitting somewhere, well, you know, this, uh, this can happen, that can happen, that can happen. Yeah, well, if this happened, this, well, I don't feel comfortable with that, and I would do this. And we sit and talk about situations. And that's the thing about relationships. I said it earlier, the communication and shit, that's why the big picture, to answer your question, anything about me and me and Asia, you just have to talk shit out. Mm. And a lot of people, especially I say it, a lot of black men don't like to talk. They, they in their own little world. Ah, I do what I do. No, talk, talk, talk. Talk, talk. We've had, we've had, we have issues recently. And my wife told me, she was like, you have to talk. Tell me you're upset. Tell me you don't like this. Tell me you don't like that. And that's what I work on. But I think we do have a, a situation. Bit, I would say business-wise, we have a fluent communication that this is what she likes. I know what she likes. She knows what I like. She knows what the return I want. I know what she wants to do. She's big into real estate and stuff. I'm big into like, trying diversified stuff like trying something and then she'll talk me off the ledge i'll talk her off the ledge but business wise when you're work when you're working with your spouse i would say y'all have to have a a open communication you know open communication line with both of y'all if, if you really want to work with your spouse 